Hi, I'm the Casual Spaceman and welcome to the second episode of Mission Control News. SpaceX is a household name in the space exploration industry. So what's so special about SpaceX? Well, let's cue the music and find out. SpaceX, or Space Exploration Technologies as it's formerly known as, was founded by Elon Musk in 2002 after the sale of PayPal to eBay. But the story in the run-up to the formation of SpaceX is a little more interesting. Elon Musk's original idea was to land a miniature greenhouse on Mars with dehydrogel and seeds to grow plants on the surface. The aim was to regain a nation's interest in space exploration and re-energise a commitment from NASA and possibly increase its budget. But Elon quickly realised that with NASA's current format of rocket technology, this was going to be far too expensive to achieve without fundamental breakthrough in its rocket technology to make such an undertaking more efficient and ultimately cheaper. So Elon being Elon decided to attempt to do it himself. However, he needed rockets. So he travelled to Russia to attempt to buy refurbished ICBMs and met with some Russian companies. However, he wasn't taken at all seriously and in fact in one such meeting he was spat at and ridiculed after making an offer. So consequently Elon left Russia empty handed. But then Elon tried another tactic. He returned to Russia with Mike Griffin who had worked for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and did manage to make a deal for one rocket. But the price tag of 8 million dollars was far too high for Elon. But not deterred, Elon read a lot of books on rocket science and performed a lot of research and found that the raw materials needed to build rockets would cost less than 5% of the total sale price. A decision was made and as a result SpaceX was born. SpaceX's first rocket called Falcon 1, named as a nod towards Star Wars Millennium Falcon, was built almost entirely in-house and was launched to prove that they could send spacecraft or satellites into low Earth orbit. However, this launch and the following two were all failures. This almost sent SpaceX into the history books as another failed company, as Elon had virtually no money left for another attempt. However, he managed to secure some final investment and just scraped enough together for one final fourth attempt. But the number four was a charm for Elon and SpaceX, as this launch and subsequent deployment of a test satellite was a flawless success thus securing finance and contracts with NASA and other companies to launch satellites into orbit, as well as making history as the first American commercial company to achieve low Earth orbit. This then allowed SpaceX to fund the development of the already planned Falcon 9 and the idea of landing and reusing the first stage booster. But not by parachute into the sea as the space shuttle had done with its boosters, but a powered landing with its own engines and upright ready to be used again. Blue Origin had already found a way for a rocket to take off and land under its power of its own engines, but had not yet perfected a way to do that after a suborbital or full orbital spaceflight. After lots of hop tests and failed landings, in December 2015, SpaceX finally managed to successfully land the first stage of Falcon 9 Flight 20 while also successfully deploying 11 Orbcom satellites into low Earth orbit. This paved the way to the reuse of their first stages but more importantly bringing the operational costs of launches down significantly and starting something of a revolution in the space exploration industry. There had been failed attempts since then but they have learned well from these failures and now routinely and successfully land and reuse first stage boosters. 
But during all this time, SpaceX had been planning on a heavy lift vehicle that could deploy much heavier payloads into low Earth orbit and beyond. This project called Falcon Heavy is essentially a Falcon 9 core with two Falcon 9 boosters strapped in line to the size of the central core. If it could be tested successfully, it would be the most powerful operational rocket in existence with a total of 27 Merlin engines producing a potential thrust of a massive 5 million tons of thrust at takeoff or equivalent to 18 747s at full throttle. SpaceX had proved they could land a single stage core with Falcon 9, but could they land the side boosters and the first stage core again with Falcon Heavy? Well, with the first test flight, SpaceX needed a demonstration payload heavy enough to demonstrate that it could launch a heavy payload beyond Earth orbit, so they decided on Elon's Tesla Roadster as a test payload. The dummy payload was heavy enough and a great visual demonstration and they even put in a dummy astronaut in the driver's seat as if he was driving the car through space. The launch went smoothly. They managed to simultaneously land the two side boosters back on land successfully. But the core stage was to land on a drone ship, but sadly didn't land and ended up crashing into the drone ship. However, the payload was successfully deployed into an orbit around the sun. This was enough to convince NASA and others that SpaceX could launch heavy payloads into low Earth orbit or lighter ones beyond Earth orbit at much lower cost than the traditional methods of launching rockets. But that wasn't the end for SpaceX. Elon had bigger dreams. He had plans to land humans on the surface of Mars since even before SpaceX was founded. After the successes of Falcon 9, plans were drawn up for a vehicle of epic proportions, bigger and more powerful than anything that had been built before. And not only that, entirely reusable. Enter the BFR, or Big Falcon Rocket, a supersized rocket that could lift super heavy payloads into Earth orbit or reach the moon and even Mars and possibly even be used as an Earth transport system by taking people from one country to another in a fraction of the time. The successes of he Falcon Heavy seems to have kick-started the development of BFR. After a few changes in design, they have settled on a design they are now calling Starship. And now this leads us on to where SpaceX are now. They continue to launch various satellites, including their own communication satellite constellation called Starlink, as well as cargo missions to ISS using mostly their now workhorse Falcon 9, and so far one satellite, Arabsat, by Falcon Heavy and many more on their manifest that she should see a steady income stream to see them through the development of Starship and their crewed spacecraft called Dragon. This crewed variant of Dragon has been tested in a test flight to the ISS successfully but sadly exploded during a ground vibration test. Investigations as to cause is ongoing and seems to have caused a delay in the first American astronauts to be launched from American soil since the days of Space Shuttle. I have already talked about the building of a test variant of Starship called Star Hopper in Boca Chica, Texas in a previous news flash. I'll leave a link in the description which will give you the lowdown of what's happening there. Well I think that's kept us up to date with SpaceX and up to speed. If you're a SpaceX fan you already know all these things so if it seems like I'm teaching you to suck eggs I apologise. This video was really meant for those that are not necessarily in the know about SpaceX. Well, that's all I have for you today with this episode of Mission Control News. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope you found it informative. If you like the video, then please hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell icon and you'll be notified when I upload more videos. So it only leaves me to say thank you for watching and science is truth.